It's been a crazy year for insane processor progression at the house of Cook as Apple has served up its latest and most powerful M3 chip in three flavors. There's the M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max, all delivered in their newest lineup of Apple devices, and we have the family of machines right here with us. The iMac, MacBook Pro 14, and MacBook Pro 16. Apple M chips are a family of system-on-a-chip processors used in Mac computers, and the first M1 was released back in November 2020. Three years later, and the M3 family has been released for Mac desktops and notebooks, and what's even more surprising is that while the M2 was announced in June 2022, the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips were launched in January 2023 this year, just 10 months ago. And already, we have the M3 Pro and M3 Max upgrades in record time. Apple, chill out. Faster and better, that's what the latest chips are. But what's new is that Apple is using a new 3 nanometer production process for the M3, which is the same used for the A17 Pro chips for the iPhone 15 Pro models. This new architecture not only provides faster performance than previous models, it also makes the M3 line of laptops more power efficient. And Apple says these laptops can last up to 22 hours and if you've ever used a laptop until the battery ran out of juice, you know that anything more than 10 hours is amazing. On top of this, the M3 chips also has some powerful features like dynamic caching, hardware accelerated mesh shading, and ray tracing. But the first thing you'll notice is not the chip, but the new space black color. And we know black is the absence of light and therefore not really a, a color. Right. But take a look at these lovely space gray and space black MacBook Pro 14 and 16 machines. Just look at the sheen and the texture and the way light barely bounces off it. Black laptops are nothing new to look at, right? But with just a simple flex, Apple has again turned something mundane into something extremely beautiful. Meanwhile, the new iMac that we have on hand is a pretty shade of blue at full 24 inches of glory, making this the second iMac on the M chip as there was never an M2 iMac. Here we have the iMac and MacBook Pro 14 powered by the base M3 chip and the MacBook Pro 16 with the top of the line M3 Max under the hood. So how do they perform? Well, we have some 4K footage to try them out with. So we do have a MacBook Air 15 on hand with an M2 chip. So it's going to be a little challenge between this and the MacBook Pro 14 since it runs the base M3 chip. So this will be a nice little hit the head between the M2 and M3. Performance wise, the M3 offers 8 core CPU, 10 core GPU and up to 24 gigs of unified memory while the M3 Pro gets up to 12 core CPU, up to 18 core GPU and up to 36 gigs unified memory. The M3 Max is only for this MacBook Pro 16 and has up to 16 core CPU, up to 40 core GPU, and up to 128 gigs unified memory. The M3 can be found on the new iMac and MacBook Pro 14, while the M3 Pro can be found on the MacBook Pro 14 and 16. So before we get into the test, here's a message from our friends at Secret Lab. Here at Geek Culture, we've tested plenty of chairs, but Secret Lab gaming chairs remain one of our favorites. Whether it's for work or play, they feel great to lean back against, with their ergonomic features offering support for the whole body, from the head and back to the arms and even something for your butt. This mix of form and function helps the Titan EVO 2022 deliver the best seating experience like no other. For more information, check out secretlab.co. All right, so we have the 15 over here with the M2 chip and with the 14 with the M3. And we're gonna be running through scrubbing and also seeing how fast each MacBook exports with their respective chips. So let's just do that real quick. We are starting with the 15, that is the M2 chip, and it's not plugged in, so everything's going on battery. And let's see how well this thing scrubs, and you can see it's pretty smooth. But of course, the main question is how long it will take for it to export the entire video, and it's about... It's about 5 minutes long. 5 minutes and 30 seconds long, so we'll have to check that out. Let's see how fast this 15 takes to export with the M2 chip. We are at render and maximum depth. Maximum render quality is ticked off as well, CBR20. So let's hit the export and hit that together at the same time. Yeah. Let's go, one, two, three. Okay, so we're coming into the final 10% of the export and we're running about six minutes and 27 seconds for about five minutes and 30 seconds of 4K footage with B-roll, with some B-roll and supers and graphics and everything. So it's running as expected. I've been working with the 15 since its launch and here, wait up, hold on. All right, and here we, we, we go, okay. 
So the expo takes about seven minutes for about five minutes and 30 seconds of 4K footage with some B-rolls inlaid and supers and graphics and whatever. I've been working with this since its launch and honestly, it has been amazing so far with an M2 chip. Even at that point in time, anything with an M1 was great already and the M2 just pushed that even further. And now let's see how the M3 works out. So same deal with the MacBook Pro 14. We are now plugged in, we're running solely on battery. It's set to full over here and let's see how scrubbing is like. It's the same project as the one on D15 and as you can see, it's buttery smooth as well. Just look at that. Render maximum depth, maximum render quality, CBR20, all right. So let's hit that export button and let's see how long this takes. All right, last 10% of the export and yeah this thing is lightning fast look at that we're not even near seven minutes right now and we're at 92 percent in the last 22 ish seconds of the export according to premiere pro and let's get ready to stop this 15 more seconds man okay that is fast okay yeah, let's go five four three two one and yep oh okay but that's the final time for this whole export. So this basically backs up Apple's claim. Okay, so for funsies, we're gonna be running the same export on my PC over here. We are running a 12th gen i7. We also have 32 gigs of RAM. And for the GPU, we are running a NVIDIA GeForce 3080. So let's see how that fares with Premiere Pro. Let me just get the project file up real quick. So as you can see, the scrubbing is relatively smooth, but obviously not as smooth as the M2 or the M3 chips right now. So. Let's see how long my PC takes to export this project. We have everything on render and maximum depth using maximum render quality and of course CBR20, the same as the other, uh, the same as the Mac, the same as the Mac. So let's just export this real quick. Let us start our export right now. Again, this is a gaming PC and also it's plugged in. So, so it's not exactly a fair comparison to the MacBook Pro 14 we have at the back. And so, okay. So it's about, a minute and 47 seconds, so 47.5 seconds. You know, the, the, the PC is plugged in, man. Come on, the PC is plugged in and we're running quite a bit of specs. So it's not exactly the fairest comparison, but it's just for fun. Obviously, the Mac Studio with an M2 Ultra or an M3 would beat out the PC like flat out. So it's just for fun, all right? But still, like, goddamn. So performance wise, this is what you're in for when it comes to these MacBook Pros when equipped with the M3. But can they run Crisis? I'm joking, but for real, let's try out Resident Evil Village on the 16 and see if native AAA gaming truly has a place in the realm of macOS. All right, let's check settings real quick. Uh, display, HDR mode, okay, full screen. Sure thing, graphics, memory, frame rate variable. Let's put uh, 120. Screen, vertical synchronization, metal, FX upscaling. All right. Oh, high. What's the highest I can go? High eight. All right, let's go high as well. For anti version and mesh quality is high. Max, let's go, let's whack everything. Yep. Whack that. On. Highest shadow quality as well. Contrast, everything is turned on. Depth of field. Yeah, why not? Uh, we don't need film noise. Okay, sick. Okay, so I think we're set for a game. Let's go back. And just increase the brightness a little bit more. I mean, really, when it comes to playing these games like this and testing them out, like you really need to sit down and play for yourself to understand how it's like. I mean, obviously, but so far like i am enjoying myself i just want to see how the game fares like when it comes to combat so if you didn't already know resident evil village is a very dark game in both senses so the m3 max is really doing the work right now let's look at this photo frame it looks really good especially with how the light hits off the photo and the frame individually you can see the green in the photo so that's nice yeah! no no friendly friendly who are you? Who sent you? Nobody. There was an oh, accident down the road. And... What's going on? Oh, he looks really good though. Hey, are you listening? Hey! Nice. What the? Shit! 
so we kind of made it this far. I think the camera kind of stopped because of the uh, because the camera's overheated. But wow, this looks really good right off the bat. And you guys need to, just need to try this out for yourself. I mean, I play Resident Evil Village on the iPhone already. You can check the video out if you want. But on the M3 Ultra, I'm playing it on the Mac Pro 16. This thing has been quite the experience. The speakers are amazing. The graphics are really good. Just look at his hair and everything that's going on here. The combat uh, is Resident Evil, right? But who would have thought? Triple A Gaming does have a space in the Mac OS world. Let's continue. Yes, here's the Maiden Crest. That's for the depression in the eyes. Save. Let's just get out of these fields first. Oh, there he is. Oh my God. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. I missed one shot already, so that's not that's not good. Okay, so that's two down, and I am out of ammo, so that's cool. There we go. Okay, okay, cool. All right, all right, okay. Nice. Okay, let's get back. Damn, the fire's moving fast. <clears throat> Step back. We can bust out with this. Here we go. Why the fuck is this happening again? Shit! Ooh, transitions between cutscenes are really good. You're not local. Even better. <laughs> Mother Miranda is gonna love you. <laughs> All right, sick. I think we have enough. As you can see, the MacBook Pro 16 with the M3 Max is the most powerful, but how powerful? Well, we ran Geekbench 6, a benchmark test to measure performance, and this laptop, the latest that Apple has, is on par with this souped up Mac Studio that we have that is running M2 Ultra. And the Mac Studio was released less than five months ago, which means that in just five months, Apple has launched a laptop that performs as well as its high performing desktop. That's Insane. So just let that sink in. So there we have it. Apple has been putting out M series chips for their machines and tablets, and they aren't planning on stopping. It's really just another day in the office for them with classic Apple designs and their drive to create faster and more powerful tech to keep them at the top of their game. If you've got any questions about these devices, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them. If you like what you're watching, keep up with us on all of our socials right here because we post stuff every day and maybe hit the like and subscribe buttons. It'll help us out a lot. Have a great weekend. If you want to see more stuff, check this out.